The best thing about HeroQuest is being able to make a 3D board. COVID-19 social isolation must be making me nostalgic to play some of the old classics. If you haven't seen my video for how I made my previous epic build for Space Hulk, go ahead and click here. But for my next epic build, I'm returning to one of the first dungeon crawlers, Hero Quest. I just have so much nostalgia for this game as it was one of the first dungeon crawlers that I ever played and was amazed with how many miniatures were in that box set, as well as furniture and items. And I just have a lot of fond memories of that game. And so when I saw this set from Dragon's Rest of how to recreate the Hero Quest board, as well as detailed plans on how to do it, I jumped on it right away. I think this is a great set just to build generic dungeons. And if you haven't seen my comparison video of 3D printed dungeon sets, go ahead and click here. Really quickly, I do want to follow up with that video. A number of my viewers did comment that I didn't showcase or review Dungeon Works. I do want to say that afterwards I did take a look at it and that definitely is a really cool set with a lot of different themes and variety. So make sure you go and check them out as well. Links in the descriptions below. But to get back to why I chose this project, it wasn't just for nostalgia for playing HeroQuest, but also last year I kickstarted a HeroQuest-like remake called AlterQuest. And so that's gonna be delivering, hopefully by the fall or winter of 2020. I wanted to prepare for that by having a set that I would be able to use for that. So the AlterQuest board is pretty different than the original HeroQuest board but I knew if I were able to make the original Hero Quest board, then I would be able to use that and adapt that for Alter Quest as well. And that's why you're gonna see some items that are specific to Alter Quest. For example, these mushrooms are not found in the original Hero Quest game, but is in Alter Quest. And so this system is gonna be perfect to play for that game, as well as a number of other dungeon crawlers that I have. I really do love the aesthetics of this game, and there are a couple of decisions that I made in order to modify some of the pieces to make building the set easier. Now, Ian from Dragon's Rest, he has instructions on how to build the walls so that you can incorporate these corner pieces in every corner of the rooms. But I decided against that because what it did was it created an offset of the walls where the walls weren't straight as it was going down because it was alternating at some points and that was to make sure that you were gonna be able to use these corner pieces. Instead, I chose to keep all of the walls pretty much straight and aligned. I also custom made a corner piece, as you can see here, by just taking two of the wall pieces and sticking them together. It's relatively easy to do, anyone can do it in your slicer. Another custom piece that I made was to slice together two pieces so that I can print this out as two pieces because there's a lot of places where it just makes creating the board easier. Also, Ian provided for his patrons a template where you can combine the tiles together so that you're not stuck with just printing out one square tile at a time. But with these floor pieces, you're really easily able to glue together on your slicer uh, floors so that you can print out uh, two by twos, three by threes. So a lot of the pieces here are three by threes that are printed as one piece. That makes assembling the board a lot quicker. I really love the fact that Ian provides us with a lot of tools to be able to customize our sets. Also here in the center, I customized this sort of boss room tiles by slicing in this floor set from Forbidden Prints. 
And if you're still in the month of May 2020, the guy at Forbidden Prince is providing these tiles for free during this month. And so make sure you grab those. Now Ian did come out with a bunch of different floor tiles that really matches up the original board, as you can see here. And the reason why I decided not to do that, not to follow that pattern, is because I did want to use this set for other games, for Dungeons and Dragons and things like that. Really to have that number of different floorboards wasn't gonna serve me well as I wasn't gonna be able to make uh, elaborate dungeon sets. And so by staying consistent, at least with these rooms, I'm able to use this set for other games. I did decide to have the outer border as well as the interior hallways as a different style, as well as the center boss room. But other than that, I wanted to have a large number of sort of regular tiles that I would be able to use for other games. The other decision that I made was instead of using these clips to put everything together, I am magnetizing everything. These pieces I think are awesome in the sense that not only are the floors magnetized together, but the walls also are magnetized as well. And that's because in the game, you don't know where the doors go and the sort of dungeon master is revealing to you and telling you, oh, the door is located here in this spot or over there. So as you're exploring the dungeon, pieces are being placed and that's why you need the flexibility of being able to remove walls during the game and replacing them with doors as necessary. I went ahead and decided to basically magnetize every connection. I already had five millimeter ball magnets from previous projects and I used up all of them and this whole project to magnetize everything, I know that Ian listed that you need about 2,600 connections for the entire board set. Now that's if you're printing out every tile independently rather than already connected together. I went ahead and got onto eBay and for about 13, 14 dollars for 216, uh, I bought eight of these, which is about 1,600 bulb magnets to be able to magnetize everything. That's gonna take a month to arrive here. And so it's gonna be a couple of weeks before I can do all of that. But in the meantime, I'm printing like mad and I am painting as much as I can so that once those magnets come, all I have to do is pop those in. Also, one of the decisions that I have with all of my dungeons is I always have the floors be a different color or shade from the walls. And I think that's really helpful in distinguishing between the walls and the floor. In this circumstance, I found that actually painting the floors one flat color without doing highlighting or anything like that is perfectly fine and it saves me a little bit of painting time because these walls actually do take a lot of time to paint. Saving a little bit of time, I'm able to just spray prime all of the floors, their color, and leave it at that and not even highlight. I did experiment a little bit and I'll show you in the painting tutorial. Uh, I put a wash on there, I did highlight to see what the floors would look like, but at the end of the day, I sort of like this clean look of just the spray paint from the rattle can with these tan floors. And that's gonna be true as well as I experimented with these stone floors too, that the gray, the dark gray on the uh, stone floors really work there as well. I am printing at 0.2 millimeters height and I think that's a good amount of detail for this set. And according to my calculations, I'm gonna be using up about eight spools of PLA in order to get this whole project done. I am so close, I just need maybe two or three more days of printing to be able to get all the rest of the walls and the floors done. And this project should be in the bag pretty soon. So for the rest of the video, I'm gonna go ahead and show you a painting tutorial of at least how to do this paint scheme where I use a rattle can to prime them first and then to highlight in order to get them done quickly. So hopefully in part two, I will be able to show you the completed dungeon set with everything painted as well as when the magnets come in, the whole system being magnetized. So this is only gonna be a two part series with this epic build, as it's gonna be a little bit faster than my Space Hulk build. So stay tuned if you wanna see the tutorial on how I painted everything. Otherwise, please like this video and subscribe. Happy hobbying and happy gaming. So the first step to painting will be priming all of the parts and I have used three primers, spray primers. And so for all of the floors, uh, my color of choice is this warm caramel 
from Rust-Oleum. Uh, I like this brand because it's relatively cheap. It's under $4 per can and it dries really fast and it bonds to plastic. Now, I've never had issues with other spray primers not bonding to plastic and so I don't really know if that's effective or not, but I really am happy with this brand, this two times ultra cover. So that's all of the floors and for the walls, I am spray painting these all in this dark anvil gray. And so this is Krylon chalky finish. The reason why I like the chalky fin finish line is because it is super matte. It's not glossy at all. And so I like this color. Now, this is a little more pricey. I think this is like $6 to buy this can. And so I would actually suggest instead, even though I'm using that because I want to finish up uh, that spray paint, um, I would suggest this that just came out. It's the Ultra Matte Slate Color. This is a dark gray. And I know there's a lot of gray primer out there, but most of the gray primer is too light. You want a really dark one. And so this, again, is less than $4 a can. So I would really suggest getting a couple of these uh, because this is a really nice color. And then for the brown, for the furniture, like this bookshelf, I am using Krylon's camouflage color, which I like a lot because, again, it is ultra matte or flat. And this is their camouflage brown color. And Rust-Oleum also makes camouflage color. I've used both, and they're, the colors are a little bit different. So it really doesn't matter if you use Rust-Oleum's brand of camouflage or Krylon's. Both of them are pretty matte, and I, I like that a lot. So they work really well as primers. Once you prime all your pieces, this is what it sort of looks like. This is where really what we're going to do is dry brushing and highlighting and it should go relatively quickly. So now that I'm taking a look at this combination, I actually don't like how dark this floor turned out with the wash that's in there. I like the more plain look of the original floor and it matches the colors of the bricks in the wall more. So I'm going to go ahead with zinc on these walls and using a stiff haired brush I grab some zinc and load up my brush fairly well and get this dark gray onto these wall tiles. And the dark gray isn't going to stand out a whole lot against the spray primer but it's just to get a solid layer down. You don't want the paint to be too watery. Now we're going to grab some black and paint the bottom metal band that's at the bottom of these tiles. And it's pretty easy to keep your brush fairly wet. Next is a honey brown or whatever accent color that you want on your bricks and just pick two or three bricks per wall tile to color. And you keep your brush pretty wet here as well. Next I'm going to take slate gray which is a medium gray and I don't want my brush to be too overloaded because I'm just very lightly highlighting the edges here. So I'm not pushing my brush in very hard into the depths of the brick. So you just want to highlight it like this. Next I'm going to take burnt umber or any dark brown is going to work and just paint over the gray for any wood parts like this. And don't forget to get these corner pieces as well. And you want the brown to get into the crevices. Next, take a medium brown, like a milk chocolate, and just highlight very lightly over the top so that you are going against the grain, so it picks up just the grain and top part of the wood. And it doesn't matter if you get this paint onto these dark bands, because we're going to go over it later with black. Grab a lighter brown. I have honey brown, and I'm very going to lightly highlight just a few spots on the wood just to accent it a little bit more. 
And these are the colors I use for all of the furniture as well. I'm going to go back to my black and go over the metal bands. Don't bother to do the rivets, uh, but make sure you get these bands across the door. Once the black dries, grab some silver. I have metallic gunmetal gray from folk art, which is a lighter silver, or I'm sorry, which is a darker silver. And just go over the parts you just painted black. And then you want to also, don't forget to get the rivets as well. And that pretty much is the painting tutorial. Not too hard, but it does take some time because there's so many pieces. And so you can see the results here. I think it, the color scheme looks really well. So that's it for this tutorial. We're, we'll see you next time.